Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Tastemaker. I'm gonna go ahead and add our pin on here really quickly. We're gonna go ahead and pin that for you guys, and then we will go ahead and wait for Abby to join us today. All right, let her in, and she'll join us in just a second. Our guest is a little bit different today. It's not an outside guest. Yes, yes. A guest from our own team. Hi, Abby. Hi. How's it going? So nice. Going great. How are you? Good, good. I was just telling everyone that today our guest isn't really a guest from outside. <laughs> it's our I own know. team. <laughs> I know, but it'll be fun to have this conversation. Totally. So excited to have you here. Um, Basically, I just kind of give a little overview to everybody who's new here. So if you haven't been on Taste of Tastemaker before, we bring on experts to bring information to you guys. Um, it's really helpful, especially between conferences and webinars and things like that, just to kind of hop on and talk about some of the things that you guys have questions about. So um, most of you know Abby, but I'm still going to have Abby introduce herself and talk a little bit about herself and her experience. Hi, everyone. There's probably quite a few of you who don't know who I am because it's not like I'm on Tastemaker on, on Instagram all the time. Um, but I'm Abby Rodriguez. I am the founder and CEO of Tastemaker Conference. And I'm joining here from The Butter Half, which is also my food blog, which is how I started. But we will get into that later. But I'm so happy to be here. So glad you're here. So today we're going to be talking about community and networking with Abby. Um, those are obviously two things that we really focus on here at Tastemaker, but also things that Abby is super passionate about. Um, so obviously we know how Abby is connected with us today, but um, Abby, can you tell everybody a little bit about your own blogger journey and how that impacted your need for community and networking? Absolutely. So I love sharing this story because it's the genesis of how Tastemaker came to be. So I actually started blogging back in 2010 when it was really fresh. I know blogging, you know, began at like the beginning of the 2000s, but it was a time when people weren't monetizing yet and fashion blogs were really popular. So I was working at, um, in retail and thought, you know, I should start a fashion blog because I saw these really chic women who lived in Europe and I'm like, Oh, that looks fun. And you know, I could, could like wear my clothes that I'm wearing to work and it'd be so cool. So I started a fashion blog and then it, it morphed into a lifestyle blog. And I actually did that from 2010 to 2015. And within that time was this huge shift within influencer marketing becoming an actual industry and brands realizing, oh my gosh, this is like an untapped market. Like this is so amazing to have people be using their their platform to share um, and so within that time I learned how to monetize and realized wow I could be making this a business a career if I wanted to and so with the lifestyle blogging I had dabbled in recipes and I really loved food photography like I had been doing it I've been doing food photography since 2013 probably but in 2015 is when I finally made the decision to to convert it to a food blog full time because food photography was a really big passion of mine and it creatively fulfilled me and I felt like it was a really great way to to be connected to social media without having to make myself the brand either which is something that I didn't necessarily want to do and I'm like I want to focus on the food and how that connects people because that made a lot of sense for me and I am a mom and I have young children. And so it was a way to hold me accountable too, for learning how to cook um, food that, that is delicious and can be made for the family. And then in the process of that um, in 2017, I was, I had realized, you know, what is missing is this community aspect. And of course we can, we can network on, social media. And at the time, you know, Facebook groups were really huge. And a lot of things have grown since then. But I wanted a way to connect to people in person, because I think that's the element that is missing for us who have jobs online, like the whole world understands the, the hardship of that now that we have to work remotely, but it can be really isolating. And so I was inspired to create Tastemaker and 
um, to bring that community together. And so that's just a little bit of backstory there of, of the community aspect. But I, I think with food in general, what's so great is that as food bloggers and content creators, we are consistently creating community through our content, right? Like recipes and food are meant to be shared and to create and foster a connection between people. So I think at it, it, its heart, it's all about community and connection. Totally. Well, we asked you all for some questions um, about community, networking, and Abby, I'm going to get into some of those so you can answer those for us today. Um, our first one is how do you, and I, you can take this either personally or just generally, how do you build um, community in a network in food blogging specifically? Yeah, so with that, I think, I mean, it's hard for me because I'm a little biased to be like, well, you can build community within the food blogging network, right, is one way to do that, which is how we do that. And so I think it comes down to this choice of you as the creator, like, what is, what is your goal with your, your food blog? Um, and I think what's happening and what I'm seeing is a lot of people are at this point with their food blogs that they kind of have to make that distinction for themselves and saying, like, you know, I realize I'm actually a really good educator and I value the community within the educational opportunities between peers, like business to business um, with fellow food bloggers and creators. Or, again, like I had just mentioned, really focusing on how you can be serving your audience as as a food blogger, as you're creating recipes and thinking, you know, how am I cultivating this community? And I've seen um, some of our speakers and our partners uh, create wonderful just membership sites. I think that's a really amazing way to do it as a content creator specifically. Um, Susie Bullock from Hey Girl Hey, she's on our advisory board and has spoken at our events and she's done like a wonderful job. She comes to mind off the top of my head of creating this membership and this huge community around grilling. So I think using that as a model to be like, okay, what is my focus in my niche and how can I create a really solid community around that thing and get people inspired and excited. So I've seen people obviously do it with Facebook groups, but we have so many devices and platforms at our fingertips now that it's not just limited to, you know, a Facebook group necessarily anymore. Like there's mighty networks. You can create your own membership site. You can create your own private Instagram feed. Um, you can start like just a, an exclusive newsletter that's for your little community group and have like monthly zoom meetups. I just think that's the great thing about social media and being content creators and running businesses online is that we have so many tools and resources to be focusing on how we can bring people together. Totally. Another person asked, how do we suggest that new food bloggers build a community within their own niche? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the obvious answer that I'm going to give you is, you know, come to Tastemaker Conference and join our Tastemaker Collaborative. Um, you know, look for resources that people are making for community. And so, like, we have Tastemaker Collaborative, which is a free online membership site that we just launched in an effort to keep community going because that is our number one core value. And for all of you who have been with us at Tastemaker for years now, you probably hear me say that all the time. Like, community, education, and experience, those are our core values. And, and so – coming to our events, joining the collaborative or finding other people in your niche. Um, you're able to do it that way, but also there's a lot of Facebook groups still that still exist. And I think just doing your homework of like going through, for example, I think tastemaker here on Instagram is a great resource. See all the people who follow us, click on it and go through person by person and see like what type of um, food blog or or platform that they have what is their niche specifically and a lot of times you can see people have it in their handle so that's pretty easy to be like you know vegan recipes by jesse if you're a vegan food blogger you'd be like oh i can go see that and then i think just an old-fashioned like hello commenting on their stuff send them a dm ask them if they're a part of any groups um is a great way to do that but um within our collaborative again i'm going to you know rep rep our collaborative space but we have it broken out into different niches so you can go over there and join it and see other bloggers who are focusing on the same things that you are and just I think what the other thing that's important is to make sure that we are engaging too um you can't have a community if you're not willing to participate and I know that can be really hard and scary for people that may be more introverted 
doing it online, I think makes it a little easier. But if you want to have friendships and relationships, you have to cultivate those. Totally. And I would also add that we do a story feature every Monday and Wednesday to feature you guys to each other. So it's a good way for us to kind of tell you whether or not they're in your niche. Um, you might connect with them because they grew up in the same area that you did, whatever their fun facts are that they share could be something that you relate to as well. Great tip. Um, okay. So another question that somebody asked is what are some of the features for community members within the tastemaker community, which we answered a little bit in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess I can t do like a more succinct, succinct overview. Um, we obviously have our conference which is in March of 2022 is our next in-person conference, which is a fantastic way to really network and get to know people. Those face-to-face -face interactions, I think are absolutely priceless. So number one, come to in-person Tastemaker Conference. Number two, go to our virtual Tastemaker Conference, which is in September. So there's an opportunity for an event every six months. Um, and then number three is join our Tastemaker Collaborative, which again is our free online membership. You can hit the link in the Tastemaker bio here to get links to all of that information. Um, and that is an ongoing community where you can ask questions. We post weekly prompts in there. We host, uh, we're starting to host monthly webinars with a specific theme. It, you know, we're actively building that out because it is new, but that is a place for you to really outside of social media so you don't have to deal with the, all the distractions to just find your people and talk to them and stay in touch and then through all of those things you will eventually develop a food blogger community your own little group and we have seen so many people as a result of tastemaker form their own little mastermind pods we've had um a mastermind workshop in the past where our people still stay in touch they, that was back in 2019 and they're still working together and staying in touch so again finding those people and then creating your own little groups off of that. So you have accountability partners and buddies and, and all those fun things. So those are the four, four ways that we can support nice. you in that. Um, we have another question that kind of goes along with that, which is who can benefit from going to tastemaker conference? What stage of food influencer, which should you be? So this is my favorite question because, I think a lot of people say, oh, you know, conferences are only for beginning food bloggers. And that's just simply not true because of this whole concept of networking and community. It does not matter if you have never even you know, started a food blog or even you're just thinking about it versus you've been doing it for 10 years. The opportunity to talk to people and hear their life experiences, like we all have something to learn from each other, no matter how advanced you are or whatnot and so it's for everyone it truly is for everybody the content we try to cater to a lot of um you know different levels so we have courses that are general a lot of them are general that can apply to people you know about trends and things that are pretty evergreen content that everyone needs to know you know we do have some introductory introductory courses and classes and then also things that serve people that are at a more advanced stage so we really try to make that a well-rounded educational opportunity so there's something for everybody but the big value proposition that we provide to you as food bloggers is the networking in the community both with other food bloggers and creators and brands because we do have amazing brand partnerships that come to our events we have an exhibitor hall and this year we're partnering with the inspired home show and if you're not familiar with them they are a huge trade show for home and housewares appliances they're the largest in the world and they have thousands of brands that come to expo at their show and as a part of this um which i don't know if i've announced yet but we're going to do it here we are going to be doing a special speed networking with them at mccormick place on friday evening of tastemaker conference that is happening in march of 2022 so you know that networking and community there is just like you cannot find that at any other conference other than tastemaker so so true um well i'm also excited that we made a big announcement last minute there. <laughs> um, okay, this question is, how do you network in the middle of a pandemic when you can't be in person? You do all of the things I have already talked about, which is 
join the collaborative, go look for people on Instagram, go find places where other food bloggers are hanging out. And you just have to take the initiative and be bold, take bold, inspired action and just introduce yourself, put yourself out there. Um, which again, I know it can be so scary, but it's worth it. And people are actually really kind and we all just want to belong and hang out and, and help each other. Okay. Our next question comes in once again, they all lead into each other, which is great. Um, but how do you network when you're super shy or super introverted? So I feel I consider myself an ambivert which is, I yes. am, I am <laughs> extroverted. I love people, but then I'm like, I need momentary breaks where I'm like, okay, I love you. And I love the energy here, but I need 10 minutes to go recharge and then I'll be back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I have, a. I used to be really shy when I was younger. And so sometimes I'm, I try to tap into that. Like, what would I do if I were super introverted? And I think the best way to do that is to start small you don't need to have a huge network, right? And I think this applies to anything in life. Just because something works for one person doesn't mean it's the absolute end all be all and it's the right thing for you. So if you can just start with one person, that is it. I would try to cultivate that one relationship, see what you can do and just, you know, believe in yourself, have faith that it's gonna work out. Cause I think a lot of times that introverted feeling is a fear of rejection and it's a lot of times a mindset issue. And so I think just thinking, you know what, I have a lot to offer and I am an amazing person and I want to have these relationships and I'm going to let my faith just be a little bit stronger than my fear in this situation and just go for it. Totally. And I also agree. I'm going to be a and I will go out there, show my face. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is then I go and retreat somewhere, whether it's the bathroom or a side room. And I literally like shake it out. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that was so overwhelming for me. That was a lot going on. And I put back on my smile and go back out there. Cause it can be hard. Mm -hmm. It's really exhausting unless you are a full on extrovert. I feel like just in general, like it's so fun, but it's also mm -hmm. so exhausting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. All the feelings for sure. Yes. Okay. Our next question just got sent in. It's, are there product vending opportunities for the in-person con um, conference? And then who do we contact? Yeah, so it sounds like if you are interested in showcasing your product, um, that would be more of a sponsorship opportunity. So you can either send myself an email. It's Abby, A-B-B-E-Y at Tastemaker Conference and or Chandis. But just send me an email and we can we can talk and see how we can help you. Perfect. And then someone else sent in with all of the Instagram changes, how do you guys suggest keeping up and keeping that same network on Instagram? Well, I mean, Amanda, I feel like you might be more well-versed because Amanda is <laughs> our digital marketing manager and is responsible for all the beautiful content that you see here. So thank you, Amanda. Special shout out to her for doing all of that. <laughs> um, but as I mentioned, again, the Tastemaker Collaborative that we created is in response to, I think, this growing fatigue of social media algorithms and having to show up and wait, I, I want to follow you, but you, I never see your content because it gets buried or whatnot. Um, and so I think you know, coming over to a space like the collaborative is a great way to avoid any algorithm hiccups and issues. Totally. I think any thoughts, know, Amanda? Yeah, I think it, it depends on which thing you're talking about, right? Are you talking about your community with your own audience as a blogger? Or are you talking about your community within the food blogging world? Yeah. They're like mm -hmm. so very different, but I would say, you know, with the Instagram changes, if you're worried about your actual audience, um, let's say that you're a drink food blogger and like all you do are drinks, maybe you could be hopping on more platforms. Um, maybe you could be hosting um, like small webinars on how to make drinks. Um, I would suggest like as much as possible getting people who follow you on Instagram to become a member of either if you have a membership or a course or just a subscriber to your email. Mm -hmm. So try to get them off of Instagram and somewhere where you own it. 
Yesterday was scary for me. My full-time gig, um, although I have a food blog, is social media management for multiple uh, clients. So yesterday was scary. Um, for me, I was like, I have other work to do, but it's also horrifying when you don't know when it's going to come back online, especially when it wasn't just Instagram. It was also Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so having a way to connect with your audience off of these apps that at any point can go away. We even had a tastemaker who I think two weeks ago, her account was just deleted out of nowhere. She had nothing inappropriate on there. It just went away. And that is um, awful. She had, yeah, horrifying. So she had thousands of followers and now she's like rebuilding them. But how do you even get in contact with all of those mm -hmm. people who you don't know by name to let them know, hey, I lost my account. Here's my new one. So mm -hmm. get them off of here. Um, try to get them to subscribe to your email. Always have a link in your bio with that. Um, as far as other food bloggers go, like Abby is saying, the collaborative is great. Um, even just getting onto other platforms. So Facebook, um, Clubhouse is a big one that we're kind of shifting over to. If you don't already belong to our group over there, go ahead and add that over there. Um, find each other on other platforms like Clubhouse, TikTok, really just like try to network outside of just Instagram because with all the changes, maybe not necessarily it going down all the time, <laughs> but just because all the changes are hard to keep up with. And sometimes I notice in my own feed that like the majority of the con comments are coming from other food bloggers. And it's like, well, this content isn't really even for you. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. for my followers. So I think connecting with them on other platforms is also super important. Um, but yeah, that's just coming from my perspective. I obviously want you all to stay around here. I want you to keep engaging on Instagram, um, but definitely find other avenues as well because depending on one platform is really scary. Agreed, perfectly said. Perfect, okay. Looks like we have another question that just came in. Um, it's a little outside of today's, but I think it's a good question if we wanna answer it. Is any advice on reaching out to publications, print or online? Um, yeah, I think that comes down to just having your pitch crafted well and having a media kit. I mean, you need to have a, again, a value proposition that you are bringing to them. You need to have a very direct focus, we, you know, specifically, what are you reaching out to them for? Um, what are you looking to do? Are you wanting to get featured? I mean, that that's kind of a broad question. And my answer is it depends on what you're looking for. Um, you know, if you want to talk more about that, Nostalgic Crumb, I don't know your first name, I'm sorry. Um, you can send me an email and I can answer that off to the side because I feel like that's a, that's a very large question. It's a little out of scope of the conversation, but a really, really good one. But it's more in line with the pitching and proposals. Yeah, and could be another great different conversation. <laughs> um, maybe we can bring on one of our um, friends from All Recipes. That would be really fun too. Absolutely. Um, so that's all of our questions, unless anybody else has another question for us today, talking about um, community and networking. But basically, you know, we're just so excited that everybody is here. This is a way for us to connect directly right at the time of um, with our community. Oh, I did see another question come in. Do you have a minute to answer? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Okay. So the question is, any advice on how to build an email list? Yeah. In fact, Amanda and I work really closely on building our tastemaker email list. And this is something I've been working on for years, um, which I think is one of the most important ways that you can build your business. And what Amanda was saying earlier, you own your email list and you own your website. And so I think it's really important to put a lot of energy and your resources into building that. So step number one, I think is most important is you need to create a freebie. You need to create something that is of really high value that communicates what you offer, what services and niche and expertise that you have, and then provide that to your audience for free in exchange for their email. Um, you know, and be sure to be sharing it. Like if you have a really large following on Instagram, that is something you can actively be promoting, come, you know, come get this free, this free uh, tutorial on photography, for example, or, you know, if you, um, Mrs. Barnes, I think you do beautiful herbal things. 
uh, you know, learn how to make an herbal concoction of some sort. If that's something that you know your followers want, because you want to make something that your audience is looking for. So if you have any information or you have data that you can look through your content, excuse me, your content to see which is what's performing best, that's a really good lead for you to say, my audience is responding to this. I'm going to make more freebie content around this and start building out like a newsletter funnel specifically to that. Email marketing can be really intense and very intricate, but start with the basics. Uh, we use ConvertKit. They have a lot of wonderful resources on their website. If you would want to go there to check it out, all, all of those are free. Um, I know there's some other email platforms that people use as well. Um, what's the really popular one, Amanda, that I'm thinking of that you probably know of the other people use? Mailchimp? Mailchimp's the popular one, but there's a newer one that I think it's more like aesthetically designed and it's like a very simple user like interface. There's another one, but I don't know what it's called, but we can follow up in the show. Know what you're talking about. About this. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really pretty. And I know some of our community members have commented on it and, and love that, desk. but Yes, Low Kendall, desk. you're right. Yes. Thank you, Kendall. <laughs> Flowdesk. So, um, you know, I think all of those MailChimp, ConvertKit, Flowdesk, like they all have free resources that have a ton right. of that information. Um, you know, but that's something for us for content that we can maybe have like a webinar or talk about specifically more in yeah. detail over in our collaborative. Yes. And I think, you know, a big thing for most food bloggers to keep in mind is that you want it to be directed towards your audience, your freebie. So for us, mm -hmm. we can talk about basically anything about food blogging. So <laughs> we have such a wide variety of things that you guys are constantly asking for that we can approach. I think something that's a little bit difficult for a lot of food bloggers is sometimes like, oh, well, I learned how to do this thing. I want to share this thing. If you're not teaching food blogging, or you're not teaching photography, to offer those freebies isn't necessarily going to grow your correct audience for you. So if you're wanting to grow your audience for your food blog and you're a bread maker, then maybe your freebie should be giving them like, you know, either specific like recipes that aren't on your website or giving them, you know, tips on bread making and kind of building up that correct audience. Cause I think that's, that's something I've struggled with too. Cause I'm like, Oh, mm -hmm. well people ask me all the time. How do I shoot with natural light? Okay. I'll give them this freebie. And it's like, Oh wait, these are all just food bloggers. <laughs> so this isn't who I want to be, you know, asking about recipes. And then I send them emails about recipes and they're like, I don't want this. What is this for? Um, so it's, yeah, making sure. And then like Abby said, like read your content, but also like we'll sometimes do like polls with you guys. Like, what are you looking for here? Do you like this or this? So ask your audience directly. It also brings up your engagement on Instagram. So just ask them, do you guys want this or do you want this? <laughs> See what they're looking I love for. That. Perfect. Great okay. Tip. Our IG handles. Um, Abby, what is your IG handle? Um, I'm at the butter half underscore and then tastemaker at tastemaker here. And then I'm at Amanda period Willens. I think both of our handles are linked in an Instagram post that I did to introduce us on our team. So if you go to the Tastemaker Conference um, feed, you'll see a beautiful picture of Abby down there, a couple scrolls, and then it has in the um, bio of that, the little caption, it talks about it and our handles are in there, as well as our other two team members. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions that we have for now. So thank you everybody who joined along with us today. Um, we're so grateful that you are a part of our community here. And basically, uh, Abby, do you have anything that you kind of want to add on to that? Yeah, I just want to say community is the most important thing I think that you can do for your business as a food blogger as you're growing it. I will tell you that we cannot do things alone. Like, it just doesn't happen. And the reason why my food blog got to the place where I was able to monetize it and I was able to start Tastemaker was 100% because of my relationships that I made with other bloggers that inspired me, that held me accountable, that just helped me when I was feeling down because we have a lot of emotions when we own our own businesses. It can be really hard. And so invest in yourself, invest in that time, invest in the community. Um, I think it's one of the greatest things you can absolutely do. So with that being said, if you haven't already bought a ticket to our Tastemaker Conference 
in March of 2022. It's in Chicago. Please come. Go grab your ticket. You can get it at the link in the bio here. And we join our email list if you're not on there. But we will be posting about it um, in all of our various platforms and our list and over in the collaborative. So there's lots of ways to stay in contact with us. And we're here to be your resource and to support you and be your cheerleaders along the way. So just thank you for being here. We love the Tastemaker community. Thanks guys so much for joining us today. Um, like Abby said, our tickets are already available. So head to the bio at Tastemaker Conference for all of those links and feel free to DM us if you have any questions, but we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye.